I'm Robert with the Bartholomew County Public Library. I'm going to teach you how to tie a tie. There are three basic knots that we're going to talk about today. The full Windsor, the four in hand, and the half Windsor. So let's start off with the full Windsor. The full Windsor is a, uh, it's a very respectable knot. You see it in uh, the formal portraits of presidents. And it's a good one for weddings and job interviews. And um, let's go ahead and tie it, and then we can talk about its uh, advantages and its disadvantages. Okay. So, I'm going to pick a tie here. It's a silk tie. It's uh, medium width, and, you know, the full Windsor is a good one for uh, medium width and wide ties. It's not a great one for... Um, or thin ties, skinny ties, as narrow ties, you know, um, because it's a fat knot, and a fat knot at the top of a skinny tie kind of looks weird. So, we're going to go ahead and button our collars, flip them up. All right. Now, go ahead and drape it over your neck. Now, I'm left-handed. I do this left-handedly, but really, it's just do it whichever. You know, you can reverse it if you're right-handed. So, put the tie with the skinny end about halfway down the uh, fat end, and take the fat end, cross it over the skinny end, loop it behind. So, I'm going to make a loop there. There we go. All right. And then pass it behind there. And then make another loop over there. And then pass it over the front there. All right. So that's your knot. I'm going to go over that again. I'm going to come in closer for that one, actually. Okay. So, cross over. All right. Loop. Okay. See? All right. Now behind. Loop. All right. Now pass in front. And now, okay, the final part. So you've made that fabric loop in front. Pull this part of the tie up and stuff down in through that loop there. And pull it down and then push the tie up. Not too tight though. You know, anybody who ever talks about a tie being a noose, well, their collar is probably too tight. Okay. Pull your collar down. There we go. As you can see, it's a nice symmetrical knot. Uh, you know, it doesn't uh, go one way or the other. Um, it'll work for a lot of different collars. Uh, obviously, it works for this one or for a collar that is even more spread. It'll work for a button-down collar. Um, that's, that's one like, uh, like this that has, you know, the collar with the little buttons there. And um, although it may get a little bit uh, big for that, you know, depending on the tie, depending on the collar. Okay, so removing the knot. All right. You will read people telling you about how you really need to undo it. So take it apart backwards. And that's true after enough times, because apparently it uh, tightens up the fibers to just pull it off. Um, but, you know, this, this first time, first couple times when you're just learning, try this and you can tell that you've done it right. Okay, so just pull the skinny end out and you're left with this knot here. And then, there, okay. And if it pulls out like that, 
you've done your knot right. Okay, so I talked about how this was not good for a skinny tie. It's also not good for bulky ties, like ones that are made made out of uh, they're knit ties, like made out of wool or cotton. And so what do you do if you've got a tie like that? All right. Or let's say a tie like this. And, uh, you know, the other thing about ties like this, they tend to be a little shorter too. And, um, you know, it's funny, that's, that's why when I was younger, I used to think that they were kids ties. And then I started seeing pictures of classy guys from the 50s and 60s, like uh, Sean Connery and James Baldwin, uh, wearing ties like this. And, you know, I learned my lesson. Anyway, what you do with something like this, this is a good place for the four in hand knot. All right. Now that's four in hand. Okay, so, and if you're a reader of uh, Victorian novels, you may have come across the four-in-hand carriage, and that's where this knot gets its name. It's where the carriage drivers, it's how the carriage drivers would tie their reins in a knot that's similar to this. And so, what we're going to do is cross over, run behind, around in front, up behind, and then you see again, you've got that band there, that loop, and then down. Let's try to get a little more light on this. All right, so that maybe you can see that better. So let's try that again. Okay, cross over, around back, around front, up behind, and then down through. And so if you see, after seeing that, you know, that thing that I told you about uh, the carriage drivers makes sense. It's a very fast, efficient knot. And uh, you just do it. There you go. And it too, like the full Windsor, is a symmetrical knot. It doesn't go one way or the other because it's, it's the same on both sides. But it's a little bit smaller, so it works better with a thin tie. Uh, let's see. So, the problem though is that if you've got, say, a, um, a, t a silk tie, for instance, uh, it, can, it can look a little too small. Yeah. Uh, let me show you another knot that will also work for thinner ties, but that is a little bit bigger. And this is generally known as the half Windsor. You take it, you cross, you loop around, just like with the full Windsor, you go behind, and then you cross in front, and then there, and there you go. There's your knot. All right. And slide it up. And you know, one thing that uh, I neglected to mention, but most ties are going to have this little band of fabric back here on that fatter end. It often has the name of the manufacturer on it. And you go ahead and you slide the, um, the skinny end of your tie in there to give you a nice, neat appearance. And there we go. I'd fold that down. It's also a nice looking knot with a knit tie, um, but you can see maybe what I was talking about 
when I was talking about the other two knots are symmetrical. This one does tend to lean a little bit one way or the other. And uh, it's not a major issue. But uh, if that's the kind of thing that bugs you, well, it's not the knot for you. Now, sometimes you may run into a case where you have a really long tie, like this one. This is a tie I really like, but it is very long. Let's compare it. Okay, I'm going to compare it with that gray tie that I showed you the full Windsor on. Okay, and it is, yeah, it's quite a bit longer. All right. Yet it's not terribly wide. It's actually maybe just a little bit narrower than that gray tie. Which makes it an interesting problem in that, go ahead, you know, a long tie seems to be the perfect candidate to use a full Windsor. But it looks a little odd when I tie the full Windsor on it. So, what to do? What I do is tie the half Windsor. All right. And then I've looped it around once, and I loop it around again. All right. And now, there we go. And that gives you a little bit longer tie, or a little bit longer knot, I should say. Shorter tie, longer knot. Um, and helps with some of those symmetry issues, too, I was talking about with the knot. And as I can show you. And so that's one thing to do with a, if you've got a longer tie, you can just keep looping it around. Oh, now that you've got the basics of how to tie a tie, the rest is practice. And uh, just go ahead and practice. And you know, someday, all of the self-isolation is going to be over. So you can come into the library and you can show off your tie tying. I hope to see you then. Bye.